Hello everyone and welcome back to the Nerd Cave. In this video, we are going to do a short tutorial on the addressable LEDs, mostly known as a NeoPixel. And we're going to today also look at a through hole version that I didn't even know exist. So let's get started. Now in this video, we are going to use the Raspberry Pi Pico to control all of these LEDs. If you would like to see me use another microcontroller, let me know in the comment section down below. You need to make sure that your Raspberry Pi Pico has MicroPython installed. If you're not sure how to do that, I have made this video here. So go and watch that video first and then come back to this one. So for the first tutorial, let's go first look at the most popular one, which is these LED strips that you can buy, which I have used in many projects before. We just need the Raspberry Pi Pico, a breadboard, and then we need an LED strip. So taking a closer look at this LED strip, you'll see on this side here, it is connected to the in, which will be the input from your microcontroller. And here we have the 5 volt and ground. This then will go to the D out, which will be the output that you can connect to your next pin. So we can cut the LEDs here, so we can go solder them together to make it a longer strip. Or we can also cut it here to just make it shorter. Connect the LED strip to the Raspberry Pi Pico indicated in this diagram. Here is our diagram built, which we just have the 5 volt going to 5 volt, ground to ground, and we are using GP0. You can go use any GPIO pin on your Pico. Let's go to my website and we can go get the code for this first demo. Head on over to my website, nerdcave.xyz, and go to Raspberry Pi Pico and click on Get Started. Then click on Tutorials and you will see here is the WS2812B RGB LED. We will click on this one and then we want to go click here on Code. Now here is the new Pixel library. So we're just going to go copy this and then we're going to go open Fonny and upload this library to our Raspberry Pi Pico. Here in Fonny we will just create a new file and we will go then and paste this. Then we will click on file and save this to the Raspberry Pi Pico device and we will write here neopixel.py and we will click OK. Now we will see the library is here on the Pico. Now go back to the website again and let's go look here at demo 1 which will just fill the strip with a color. So click here copy and then go paste this in a new file in Fonny. We will see we will import a new Pixel library and here we can set the number of pixels we have and also the pin we have connected this to. So we use GPO 0. Here we can go set the color and also the strip brightness. And in here we just fill the whole strip with that color. Running the code we can see here all our LEDs has light up red. On the second demo we can go set the LEDs individually. So I'm going to just go copy this and paste it in Fonny. So we see here again we have the number of pixels. And here we can go to find the color. Now we have here red, green, blue, and sometimes you're gonna have to change this to GRB depending on the type of new pixel you have. So for example, when we have red, green, blue, and you set this to red and it shows green, you're gonna have to go switch these two out. Now we see here we have a strip dot set pixel, and in here we can go set it with specific colors, and we can see these are set to off since it is 000. So let's run this and see what do we get. So running this code, we can see this first pixel is set to red, green, blue, and yellow. So we can go make any color we want here, and we can see these ones are then set to off. The new pixel also comes in these matrix arrays, which we can also connect to the Pico. So here we have our D in pin, and here we have our D out. You'll see here's a five volt in ground, and the reason why we have this here in the middle is if we have a lot of these grids, we want to make sure they all get equivalent power so that there's no voltage drop. So we can connect 5 volt and ground here, 5 volt ground here, and 5 volt ground here, and we just need this D in pin. If we wanted to connect another one of these matrices, we can then take this D out to another one's D in. And we can see these would have been able to plug into each other. Now sometimes we might want to use a PCB and we might not be able to solder these surface mount LEDs on a PCB because maybe we don't have the correct tools. Now what I've seen online is you do get in these addressable LEDs that has pins. And here we have an 8mm one and we can see there's different types. This one is a diffuse and this one is not diffused. 
So this one has like a white coating making it diffuse so the light will spread more evenly. Where this one might have a brighter spot here on the top and the light will shine more direct. So we are going to look at how do we connect these to the Raspberry Pi Pico. We see the pinout is very basic. We have our ground, our 5 volt, and this will be the data in from our Pico. And then this data out will go to the next LED's data in. So this should not be too difficult to go make a big circuit of this. Looking at this diagram, it seems like we need to connect a 75 ohm resistor to each of the inputs. Now, I do not think this is necessary, and this is just to have protection for the GPIO open, but this should be fine. The only thing that we might want to do is connect this 100 nanofarad between the voltage and ground pin to make sure that there is no voltage drop. So let's go connect a few of them and see what happens. Here I have those LEDs connected and you just need to make sure because I do see now they can have different pinouts because the one I have is ground and then D in where the other one was ground and D out. So just make sure when you buy it to check your data sheet or from the supplier that you're buying from. If I remove these capacitors, it is not making any difference, but it might be in an application where you're gonna use maybe more than 100 of these. But as you can see, the code running here is exactly the same code we had for the LED strip. So this would be nice for future projects to use these LEDs instead of needing to use the surface mount one. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And now that we know these addressable through hole LEDs work, I do have a special project planned for later this month. So make sure to subscribe not to miss it. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.